You're using GarageBand for iOS wrong. In this video, we're going to talk about a few things that you might be doing wrong in GarageBand for iOS and what you should be doing instead. GarageBand for iOS allows you to create a maximum of 32 tracks. Once you hit that track limit, you cannot add any more tracks to a project. If you do find yourself hitting that hard limit, there is something you can do that can get you back on track and adding more. Here is a project on my iPad that has reached the maximum number of tracks. You can see that I'm unable to add any more tracks to it at all. If I tap twice on the track header of this track, I can select Merge from the menu that pops up. In the track header area, I can tap on the circles here to add the tracks that I would like to merge together. I can then tap merge to start the process off. What's actually happening here is that GarageBand's allowing you to export or bounce a selection of tracks in place, essentially consolidating multiple tracks into one real audio track. Bear in mind that this means you'll no longer be able to edit things like effects, automation, volume, etc. of individual tracks that you've merged together. So it's best to finalise any mixing or editing in the tracks that you plan to merge before going ahead with it. You can use merging not just to add extra tracks to a project. If you're producing a particularly effects-heavy project on an older iDevice, for example, there's a good chance you'll run into the dreaded optimising performance message where GarageBand will lock up, go through the optimising process, and then allow you to carry on for about two minutes before needing to optimise again. It's infuriating. You can take some of the strain off of your device's processor by merging some of your effects-heavy tracks together. Again, remember that you won't be able to edit these tracks or the effects you have applied to them after merging, so make sure you're 100% happy with them beforehand. GarageBand for iPad and iPhone only gives you 8 bars to work with by default. Luckily you have the option to not only extend the length of your projects almost indefinitely, but also organise it into clearly defined sections. First off, tap the Song Section button, it's the wee plus icon in the top corner. To have your project match the length of your recordings, simply tap Section A and then tap the automatic toggle switch here. Your project will be one big section that will last as long as you choose to record into it. To add separate sections to use as intros, verses, choruses, etc., open the Song Sections controls and tap Add. The new empty section is added after the last section. Tap anywhere to close the song section controls, or you can keep adding new sections as you wish. To change the length of a section, open the song section controls again, and then tap the inspector button next to the section name that you want to make longer. Tap the up or down arrow next to manual to lengthen or shorten the section incrementally by bars. You can swipe vertically to change it in larger increments also if you wish. You can play different sections by swiping left or right in the tracks view until you get to your desired section. Or you can open the song section controls and then select the section you want to play. To play all the sections in the song, choose All Sections. GarageBand's Virtual Drummers are fantastic, but what if you want a bit more say over how they play? 
The built-in editor is pretty good, but might not give you as much fine control as you'd like. Well, a member of the GarageBand users Facebook group, Benny Sandu, came up with a hack a wee while ago that allows you to convert your drummer track patterns to MIDI, which in turn allows you to edit every single drum hit in a pattern. To do this, create your drummer track and adjust its pattern to a point where you're happy. Then create a new audio recorder track. Hit record and record a few seconds worth of dead air. You don't need to record anything here really, we're just essentially creating a dummy track. Head back to the tracks view and you should have your drummer track and an audio track with a little bit recorded, it should look a little bit something like this. Next, tap and hold on the screen and select all of your drummer regions and the small audio region at the same time. Tap on your drummer region and hit copy. Now close that project and open a new project. At the sound library, select the audio recorder again and once again record a second or so of nothing. You need to have at least one track populated with some form of recording in order to access GarageBand's tracks view. With that done, tap on the tracks view icon then tap the Add Track button once more. This time, select Acoustic Drums from the Drums section. Head back to the Tracks view again and tap on an empty section of your newly created acoustic drum track and hit Paste from the menu that pops up. Your drummer region will paste into your acoustic drum track as MIDI. From here you can do things like open up the acoustic drums instrument and select from the dozens of available drum kits that GarageBand has. or you can edit the individual notes in your drum pattern, fine tuning and tweaking to your heart's content. Right, those are three things that you were doing wrong in GarageBand for iOS, but we're not finished yet. Watch this video next to find out which GarageBand features Apple are hiding from you.